Now we are up to the last step of resizing the image, which is getting rid of this funky rectangle that we put on top as a temporary helper. So we want to just click on that and delete it, but remember that we grouped it. So if we try that, we're going to delete everything. So what we need to do is select it, go up to Object, and Ungroup, and then click away, click again, and this time we'll get just the top. I heard to mention that this is really a big three-step process. So we've just gone through and completed the step of resizing the image. So that was our step one, resizing the image inside of the Illustrator. Then we move on to exporting, which luckily is very quick and easy. And then we move on to the third step, which is testing in Photoshop, which is also pretty quick and easy. Okay, first couple of steps. We've got to verify which artboard we want and then go into File, Export, Export As. So if you have multiple artboards, the best way to figure out which artboard you're actually working on currently is just click something on it, look to the bottom of your screen, and it will give you the number there. So you can see a number two there. And if I were to click on the other artboard, you can see that changes to one. So I know it's artboard number two that I want to deal with. So I am now going to go up to File, Export, Export As. And then the most important step, we'll take it from the top down, but I just want to mention so that I get to say it twice, is you have to remember to check Use Artboards. So you heard it once. Okay, so first thing we want to do is name that appropriately which would just be first, last in the short description. We want to make sure that that is now going into the save to Steve or turn into Steve file because this is going to be a keeper here. And we're going to change the format. In our case, we're going to want JPEG. But I just want you to see also that there are a lot of other formats in here. So if you ever need to do this, to bring it into Photoshop, you can choose Photoshop document. You see TIFF there, you see PNG. And then, of course, like we said, check Use Artboards. And then Range lets you select your artboard if you have more than one artboard. So I'll put a 2 in there. And then we click Export. Now this is going to take us into another menu. And depending on what file method we selected, it will be the options for that. Now, my assumption, at least right now, is that you're making this to turn in to be displayed on web. Now, if you were doing this for a design contest, they might ask you for CMYK, so just keep in mind, but also you'd be saving it at a much higher resolution and probably as a TIFF. So let's just stay on, on task here. So color mode, RGB, quality, we want to slide that all the way up to the max because we are going to go low resolution, just 72 pixels per inch. Uh, compression method, baseline standard, resolution 72, and just want you to see something here. Here's how you would pick different resolutions. You have a couple more presets, and then you can also click other, and you could type in any number of pixels per inch that you wanted. Okay, and then anti-aliasing, type optimized is perfect for our situation. And then embedding the color profile when you're saving for web, if it defaults to sRGB, is a good option and then we click OK. So that's all the steps. Believe it or not that thing is now exported. It happens very quickly. It is now in the folder turn into Steve that we made on the desktop and now we will go ahead and do the final and probably most important step so that you don't lose any points on your grade. Test it in Photoshop. In a, a Big thing to keep in mind is that we are never going to do a save in Photoshop for this process. We don't want to alter it in Photoshop. The whole point here is that we make it the exact size we want and we convert it. And the key thing there is that we're never manipulating pixels. Every time you crop an image, rotate an image, and save it again, you're manipulating the pixels, thus uh, hypothetically degrading the quality of the image. We're going to go locate our file. And if you don't like the fact that it put the O2 on there for uh, the artboard, you can just simply click 
hit the return key and then place your mouse where you don't want things anymore delete 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 and then we can either just simply drag and drop this on the apple icon to open or i'm sorry not the apple icon but the photoshop icon to open it up or we can right click on it and say open with and select photoshop and then our first step in Photoshop is to do the F key test. Now, Photoshop defaulted for me with the crop tool. See here, so I'm just going to hit the escape key so that the crop tool goes away. And then F key is just simply what it sounds like. You hit the F key on the keyboard, not the function key, but the F key right between the D and the G. First step, it gets rid of everything. Uh, next step, it takes you back. So it's, if there's like a three steps that you go through it gets rid of some of the stuff around and then the second one it brings you to a complete background uh, black background and then third time brings you back to where you started this is the most crucial area and here what you want to look for is any slivers of white that might be showing up now if you had a bleed like i did in this case that's never going to happen so that's why using a bleed is very smart but i'll show you an example in a second here of, of what can go wrong and, and often does. Now that we've done the F key test, we move on to image, image size and verify what you're expecting. It helps to just write down on a piece of paper what you expect to see in the program before you go into image, image size. So if your image was wide, you know, you touch the sides back in Illustrator, then you expect to see an image that's 1600 pixels wide. If your image was tall, you hit the top and the bottom first and had to adjust the sides in, then you're expecting to see an image that's 1200 pixels tall. What the width is in the case of a tall image, we don't know, but all we care is that it is 1600 or less. So you can kind of just go through this as a checklist and if something is wrong, you're not getting these results, then you did something wrong. You have to go back, watch the video a little bit slower, step through it again. Of course, if you're in class, uh, you can always you know, ask me to come over and see if we can figure out together what you're doing wrong. The other thing you should be looking for is that it is 72 pixels per inch. There is an instance where sometimes Illustrator will add a pixel to whichever number you're going to. That is absolutely okay. That's not your fault. That's just a little, I don't know, glitch, if you will, inside of Illustrator, but one pixel doesn't make a difference. So back in Photoshop, just need to hit the F key one more time to get back to the screen. And then we go to image, image size. Okay. And so since our image was tall, hit the top and the bottom first, we're expecting to see a height of 1200. And there's that extra pixel that we've talked about. Um, totally fine. So then the only other thing we have to ask ourselves, since we're perfect on the height, is, is our width 1600 pixels or less? Yes, it is. Now we cannot, in any case, flip-flop those numbers. It just doesn't make sense. It wouldn't fit on the website. So I cannot have an image that is 1600 pixels tall. It has to be, it has to max out at 1200 on the height. And in the other case, it has to max out on the width. And either at the end of this video in a separate one, we'll talk about image where it's wider. The last thing we want to check for is that the resolution is 72 pixels per inch. We've got that. We're good. It's ready to turn in. Now, something to keep in mind, I already mentioned this one here, but um, do not print from this image. What we've done is just created a low res, low resolution, 72 pixel per inch image. If you want to print out, print from the original Illustrator file where everything is much higher quality. Vector graphics, no, no resolution. In other words, a, a, a Illustrator file that is just pure vector graphics can be scaled up and down with no problem, but that's not the case with 
something that you're working on in Photoshop. Now let's look at what can happen if your background doesn't have a bleed, the, the big error that can happen. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll take care. We'll do also two birds with one stone, if you will. We'll also take a look at this um, one that's wider than it is tall. So I'm going to ungroup this, delete it. And you can see I clearly have a bleed here, so there would be no problem. But let's look at the example where there is no bleed. This error would occur is if your original document, let's say it was an 11 by 17 poster, in this case 17 by 11, and you made the, the document 11 by 17 like you should, uh, but you didn't put on a bleed, um, which you always should. Um, but let's just say that you, that's what you have, that's what you're dealt with, and then you followed all the steps. You put it over here uh, onto the artboard that measured 1,600 pixels wide by 1,200 pixels tall, resized it, and now you're going to do your export. Okay, so file, export, export as all the things on the checklist that I showed you earlier. And then we go to our file, open it up in Photoshop to run the three tests on it. And first one is the F key test. And you see that right there, that sliver of white that's showing up. So that's another reason why you want to bleed. It not only is essential for print-based work, but it also helps with web-based work too, especially in this instance. So how are you going to fix that? You're going to go back into Illustrator and you're just going to make sure that anything that touches the edge goes beyond the edge. And it really doesn't matter how far because that's the whole point of checking use artboards. And so I'm going to just super exaggerate this and then I'm going to do a file export and then show you what I get. So here we are in Photoshop and even though I made that Im image huge, we can see that it is still the proper size because I checked use artboards and now when we do the F key test, it passes with flying colors. And then ask yourself and even pause the video, what size do we expect this image to be? Time's up. We have no clue about the height, right? Because we touch the sides first. Now, when I say we have no clue about the height, we know one thing. It's going to be 1,200 pixels or less, most likely or less. But the width, we're expecting to see exactly 1,600 or that one pixel glitch of 1,601. And we're expecting to see a uh, resolution of 72 pixels per inch. So we go to image, image size, and there we go. There's our 1601 by something less than 1200 for the height and a resolution of 72. So if this was your project, you would be all set, ready to go to turn it in. The next video, you probably won't need to watch, uh, because it deals with that rare circumstance where you did a project start to finish in Photoshop. About the only time that that makes any sense is if you're just doing a photograph to show in your portfolio or you are doing things uh, designing strictly for the web. The reason I say that is all professionals have this general workflow. Photo manipulation in Photoshop but then when it comes to setting the type for a graphic design project, the type is then set in the type mastery programs, i.e. InDesign or Illustrator.